I'm afraid that my iMac has reached the end of life. I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I've made the decision. Windows must be installed on my iMac. Is there anyone here that wishes to join me? I'll do it. I too shall install Windows. You're very brave. The rest of you must leave. Hi. I would also like to install Windows. Please, sir, let me install Windows. This is a mission you don't come back from. You should buy a new iMac. And enjoy your life. Yes, sir. Long live Apple. Hey guys, we're back and uh, we're having more shenanigans here, putting Windows on a Mac. That thing you see here is from the other iMac video that I made. I just used the same front part, but I did put Windows on the iMacs on the 2009, 2011, even my 13, 14, 17. That was Windows 10, but when I picked up this 2013 Mac Pro and it has dedicated GPUs even though they're old and there's a video about me picking that up I'll link down below then I started to think of course you can put Windows 10 on it and then I thought wait so if you can put Windows 10 on it you can put Windows 11 on it right I never even thought to do that before plus those systems were very old but this one's semi-powerful and how would it run and how would you install it? I've seen people do it. Actually, before I did it, I thought it was going to be the first one, but apparently not. Anyway, the way that they do it is they use Boot Camp. And then they, instead of picking the Windows 10 ISO, they pick the Windows 11 ISO. And then when it boots to install, they go into a command prompt and they do some... Uh, I'm sorry, regedit, and they do some things to make it work. But that's a fresh install. My thing that I wanted to do was upgrade the existing Windows 10 installation to Windows 11. Because if you already have Windows 10 on your Mac or iMac, you maybe don't want to do a whole fresh install because you have some things on there. So I did make a Windows 11 USB installer that bypasses the checks for the requirements. And then I already had Windows 10 on it, so I just plugged it in, clicked on setup. It went through, it said, do you wanna keep all your files? I said, yes, now we're in Windows 11. So here's Windows 11 installed. It went fairly smoothly. And since it was already boot camped by the Windows 10, everything just carried over and like what I was thinking, if you can run Windows 10, you should be able to run Windows 11. And the question is, why would you do this? There's really no reason because Windows 10 works fine. It's still supported until October of next year. And the answer is, I just wanna know if it works, that's all. It should work, but I wanna see if there's any glitches or problems before you would have to upgrade next year. If I can learn this now, this will help other people decide if they want to convert to Windows 11. And of course, at some point, you're going to have to change. So the first thing I wanted to do was check the specs again. So we have the Xeon 6 core 12 thread and 16 gigabytes of DDR3, which should be pretty good for Windows. Not sure about Windows 11. Kind of the specs of a, a budget gaming PC, maybe like a fourth gen i7, something like that. And then we have the dual AMD D500 three gigabyte GPUs. And I went ahead to go to Cinebench to do a, a benchmark. And there that is. 
Also, I went to Furmark so I could run it and see what kind of score I would get there. The 1080p didn't really work out too well, so I went down to 720p, and it was in the over 60 frames per second. But there's something interesting. It shows both GPUs in GPU-Z and in Furmark Benchmark. And when I would put them on the benchmark, it would, say, it would say they were both working. But I was under the impression that only one could be utilized. So I'm not sure why that is. Is it really using the GPU or is it just saying it is? Not sure. Overall, it's pretty smooth. I noticed that the, the graphics had a glitch in it. And I think I forgot to take a picture of it. The driver for the GPU was from 2015. So I went to AMD to install the software, but of course it wouldn't let me install the new software. I had to find the old Radeon Fire Pro driver for bootcamp. Once that was installed, then it was 2019 driver. So I guess that's the last one available. And it works better now. When I first started this recording, the screen was glitching bad, I think, because of the screen recording and now it's working fine. The other thing I found is if I load up MSI Afterburner, it does let me change the, the clock of the GPU. The core clock, but it's 725 for the Radeon D500. It lets me take it up to 850. I'm sorry, 825. So watch, it's 725 now. And then I'm going to change the setting in MSI Afterburner, apply, and look at the frame rate. This is the Furmark result before overclock and after. The result is much higher because it's not dropping frames anymore. And also the 725 that was there before, it wasn't at 725, it was bouncing between 725, 300. The other GPU, same thing. So it's actually not stable, but when I put full clock, 825, full memory, extra, a little bit over overclock, whatever it lets me, and then extra power limit, it goes, it just sticks at 825. So it, it's a small difference, but the D700 is an 850 clock. So you're almost approaching the D700 speed even though this has three gigs and the other one has six and this one has less shaders, but still it's something you can do. I've never heard of that. Maybe you can tell me on a Mac if you can actually do that in the Mac software. That would be interesting, but it does raise the temperature. So it would go from kind of 70 degrees Celsius to 72. So running it at the higher clock speed did make it run hotter, which is not good because the CPU is using the same heatsink. You know, it's all a triangle design. The GPU shares the heatsink with the CPU. If I had to say the performance of this Mac Pro is probably somewhere between a fourth gen upper end to close to a, a sixth gen low end CPU. Overall, pretty good, nothing blazing. If it was a budget gaming PC for Windows, that would be more than acceptable, I think. I'm not sure what games you can run. This is just my first kind of look at it. But my overall impressions is it works pretty good. Everything, when you click on a browser or something, it launches pretty fast. It is an SSD. The speed on the SSD when I did a test was 900 read, 930-ish to 900 read, which is pretty good. That's double of a typical cheap SATA SSD. So it, it's, I would say it's acceptable. And running Windows 11 so far, I haven't run into a problem. Other than there's two things that I noticed. The, the sleep, I know other people had issues with the sleep. So the sleep kind of works and it kind of doesn't. When I let it sleep, and I move the mouse, sometimes it wakes up and sometimes it doesn't. And I think it's because of the amount of time that I'm leaving it there. Also Windows 11, I'm not used to, so maybe there's some power settings that I need to adjust. 
I did try the hibernate, so it basically turns off, but it's still in the same state. And then you can just push it back on and it's right back where you were. So I like the hibernate function. The sleep, I'm not too sure about. I am using a Mac keyboard, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I should use a PC keyboard when it's using Windows. That's the only thing I've noticed is just kind of the sleep weirdness, but it, I think that might be a Windows 11 thing. The other thing is when you're using it, just overall, there's just some sort of, you can't even see it in a video. There's there's some sort of lag, like it it's it's thinking about something. I don't know how to explain it. It's, it's not slow. When you click on something, it comes right up. But as you're using it, you'll just notice this little kind of, it's almost like a dropped frame in a game, but it is a, a new install and I haven't really used it a bunch yet. So maybe that will go away. Maybe it's an issue, not sure. It's, it's still useful. It's probably what you would expect if you installed Windows 11 on an old PC anyway, because this is now an 11 year old computer. Windows 10, as far as I remember, did not have that sort of issue and you should probably just keep with Windows 10. But if you have applications or something that requires Windows 11, it does work, it was easy. If you have a Windows 10 key activated when you upgrade, that key should carry over to Windows 11, so you'll be able to activate it. So let me know what you think. I was going to run Fortnite on this, but I've already seen other people do it, and it's kind of the same result every time. It's pretty much 30 frames per second in the lower settings, and you kind of have to run to 720p on any game to get any kind of acceptable performance. If you try to run 1080p, it just, it'll work, but it's just so bad that it's not really worth um, going down that road. But you could upgrade the GPUs, I guess, to get a little more, but I'm not sure if that's worth it at this point. I probably will just try to do some emulation. I haven't done that yet. And then just the basic Windows tasks. Overall, I'm pretty pleased for the price of this computer. It being so expensive back in the day and then being so cheap now, it's much better, I think, than an iMac. At least you can configure it and mess around with it rather than the iMac where the whole computer is inside the screen. So if you have installed Windows 11 on your older Mac, leave a comment below and let me know what your experience was. I think it was okay, but probably Windows 10 would be much easier. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.